let's go over direct and inverse variation. I'll show you the definitions, some examples, we'll do some practice problems, look at the graphs of these types of relationships, and finish with a word problem. There are chapters in the description if you want to skip around the video. Let's begin with direct variation. What is it? Two quantities, x and y, are said to vary directly if y equals k times x for some number k that's not equal to zero. And this number k is called the constant of variation. Here's what direct variation looks like when k is positive. It's just a line passing through the origin. You can see as x goes up, y goes up. If k were negative, then as x went up, y would go down. Here are some examples of direct variation. a equals 3b. a and b vary directly here, and of course the constant of variation k is equal to 3. Another example, x equals 1 half y. x and y vary directly. x is equal to some non-zero number times y. In this case, that non-zero number that we're calling k is equal to 1 half m equals negative 4n. Here's an example where k is negative. k is negative 4 here. If you were to graph it, it would be a downward sloping line through the origin. Here's another example. g equals h over 3. This is the same as 1 third h. So g and h vary directly. The constant of variation k is equal to 1 third. g is just equal to 1 third of whatever h is. The key with direct variation is that k is being multiplied by the variable. You'll see that's not how it works with inverse variation. We say that x and y vary inversely if y equals k divided by x for some non-zero number k, where again k is called the constant of variation. So immediately notice a difference here. For direct variation, it's k times x. For inverse variation, it's k divided by x. It's k multiplied by what we call the multiplicative inverse of x, because we could write this also as y equals k times 1 over x, and that's the inverse of x. So y and x are varying inversely. These graphs are a little more weird. If you graph inverse variation, it looks something like this when k is greater than zero. If k were negative, this curve would be flipped down here, and this curve would get flipped up there. Here are some examples of direct variation. a equals 3 divided by b. In this case, the constant of variation k is 3. It's 3 divided by b. x equals 2 divided by y. k in this case is 2. m equals negative 4 times 1 over n. That's the same as negative 4 divided by n. So this is inverse variation. m and n vary inversely. And that constant of variation k is equal to negative 4. In this example, g equals 3 divided by h. k is equal to 3. g and h vary inversely. Again, for direct variation, it's y equals k times x. For inverse variation, it's y equals k divided by x, which is the same as k times the inverse of x. That's 1 over x. Let's do a couple examples. We'll write an equation modeling direct variation and inverse variation, and then we'll graph those equations and compare. In this first question, we want to find an equation that relates x and y such that x and y vary directly. So we'll need something like y equals k times x, and we're given that when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. Okay, so this is not too difficult. What does direct variation look like? It looks like y equals k times x. We need to find k. That's how we write this direct variation equation. We gotta find k. How do we do that? Well, we know that when x is 2, y is 4. So we could write 4 equals k times 2. We're just plugging in those known values. Dividing both sides by 2, 
then tells us that k must equal 2. So the direct variation equation is y equals 2x. We also could have started with x equals k times y, because if x and y vary directly, then this is also true. And if we went through these same steps, we would have got k equals 1 half. It's the same model, it's just that the way we did it, y is a function of x. If we did it this way, x would be a function of y, but we'll get the same thing, more or less. Doing it either way would be correct. Let's move on to the next one. Find an equation that relates x and y such that x and y vary inversely and y equals 4 when x equals 2. So same idea as before, but this is inverse variation. So it's not y equals k times x, it's y equals k divided by x. Then we plug in our known information. We know that y is equal to four when x is equal to two. Then multiplying both sides by two, we find that k must equal eight. So our inverse variation equation is y equals eight divided by x. So for these types of problems, write a direct variation equation, if that's what you've got, and then plug in the known information to solve for k. If it's inverse variation, write that equation and plug in the information you've got to solve for k, that constant of variation. Once you've got k, you can write your final equation modeling the direct variation or the inverse variation. Let's try graphing these. Before we graph them, we'll need a table of values, and then we'll be able to compare the direct variation and inverse variation numerically and graphically once we plot the points and connect them. Here's a sampling of x values from negative 3 to 3. Let's plug them in and fill out the table. 2 times negative 3, filling out the direct variation row first, is negative 6. Then we have negative 4, then negative 2, then 0, then 2, then 4, then 6. For inverse variation, plugging in negative 3 gives us negative 8 over 3. Plugging in negative 2 gives us negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Plugging in negative 1 gives us negative 8 over 1, which is just negative 8. You can't plug in 0 to inverse variation because that would be a division by 0. So I'll just write for space, I'll write NA, not applicable. You cannot plug zero into inverse variation. Plugging in one, we get eight. Plugging in two, we get four. And plugging in three, we get eight thirds. This is generally a pretty good range of x values if you're trying to graph direct variation and inverse variation. Also notice the symmetry, negative two, negative four, negative six. Positive two, positive four, positive six. Same with inverse variation, negative eight, negative four, negative eight thirds positive 8, positive 4, positive 8 thirds. There's this symmetry about 0. These are what we call odd functions. How if you negate the x value, for example, plug in negative 2 instead of positive 2, you get the negation of the y value, negative 4 instead of positive 4. If we graph all of these points and connect them, this is what we get. We get the direct variation line through the origin, and we get the inverse variation curves. Those make a shape called a hyperbola. So there are your notes about the graphs. For direct variation, you're always going to get a line passing through the origin. In this case, k is positive 2, but if k was negative, the line would be downward sloping. For inverse variation, you're going to get these two disconnected curves. Again, that makes what we call a hyperbola. They're disconnected because the function is not defined at x equals 0, because that would cause a division by 0. So it's never going to hit the y axis since we can't plug in x equals 0, but also there's nothing you can divide 8 by to get 0 which means you're also never going to hit the x-axis because y can't ever be zero. So these hyperbolas never intersect the axes. They just approach them, which you can see there. Let's do a couple of rapid fire questions. Does the equation represent direct variation, inverse variation, or neither? Here are four. You can take a look and let me know what you think. All right, here are the answers. For problem one, this is inverse variation. So I'm just gonna circle it in red. It's x equals two divided by why? That's inverse variation, not direct variation. Uh, for this one, problem two, we'll circle it in black because it's neither direct variation nor inverse variation. It's eight times x plus three. That's not direct variation. If the plus three was not there, then it would be direct variation, 
but the plus three is there, so it's not direct variation. Neither is it inverse variation. Problem three, x equals five times y, that's direct variation. Problem four, x times y equals three. If we move the x over to the right side, we would get y equals three divided by x. Clearly, that is inverse variation. And this is a way you might sometimes see inverse variation written. We wrote before that y equals k divided by x. That's inverse variation. But if you multiply both sides by x, you get xy equals k. So that's another way you could write inverse variation. Similarly, for direct variation, instead of writing y equals k times x to represent the general model, you could write y divided by x equals k. But now let's do a word problem to wrap things up. Credit to Larson's Algebra 1 book for this problem. It's about bike banking angles. So here's a bicycle rider and he is turning. You can see how they have to tip the bicycle when they make a turn. And the angle, which we're calling B here, that's created from the vertical direction to the bike is called the banking angle. What we see in this graph is an inverse relationship between the banking angle, which we could call B, and the turning radius for a bike going at a particular fixed speed. So as the turn gets tighter, and thus the turning radius gets smaller, you can see that the banking angle gets bigger in this graph. Whereas if you make a more shallow turn, the turning radius is bigger, you can have a smaller banking angle. The first problem here is to find an inverse variation model that relates B and R. We can do that pretty easily because we're given a point that satisfies the model, 3.5. 32. It's inverse variation, so we know the model should look like this. The banking angle equals k divided by the turning radius. Again, you could write it as r equals k over b if you wanted to. That would just give you a different value for k, but it would still be the same model. In this case, it makes sense to write it as b equals k divided by r because b is on the y axis, and that's generally the guy that we'll have by itself. Then we can plug in the known point in order to find k. We know that for a banking angle of 32, that corresponds to a turning radius of 3.5. We can then multiply both sides by 3.5 to find that k equals 112. So our inverse variation model is b equals 112 divided by r. Problem b is to use the model that we just figured out to find the banking angle for turning radius of five feet. So this is the use of the model. For any turning radius, we know the appropriate banking angle. We know the banking angle, B, for a turning radius of five feet, it should equal 112 divided by five. And this equals 22.4. To be specific, it's 22.4 degrees. Final question. How does the banking angle change as the turning radius gets smaller? To answer that question, let's just take a look at the graph. Like we said before, as the turning radius gets smaller, you're making a tighter turn, the necessary banking angle gets bigger. Whereas if you're making a more shallow turn, the banking angle can be less sharp. But you can also see how the steepness of this relationship goes down as the turning radius gets bigger. So if we go from a turning radius of four feet to three feet, that results in a banking angle increase of about 10 degrees looking at the graph. So this is just a rough estimate. But if we go from say a turning radius of six feet to five feet, so it's still a one foot decrease, but it's bigger R values, we only get a banking angle increase of maybe around four or five degrees. Here's the answer as given in the textbook because it would take me forever to write it out. As the turning radius gets smaller, the banking angle becomes greater, which we saw. From the graph, we can see the increase in the banking angle is about 10 degrees for a one foot decrease from four feet to three feet but the increase is only about four degrees if we do a one foot decrease from six feet to five feet. Going from here to here, even though it's the same decrease in turning radius as going from here 
to here, the resulting increase in banking angle is greater for those smaller R values. And there's an overview of direct and inverse variation. Here's the definitions one more time. We say two quantities X and Y vary directly if Y equals K times X for some K not equal to zero, and they vary inversely if Y equals K divided by X for some K not equal to zero. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check the description for links to other algebra videos and my algebra playlists. Thanks for watching.